Hey guys, this is Chris Ritchie and I'm back with another video. And in this video I'm going to show you how to create a mastering chain. And mainly I came across this because I was working on a project and I was recording it in with the MX-1 and I had the mastering button on the MX-1 turned on. And I was really happy with the way it sounded. I got into a groove and was really happy with it. And then I realized I had the mastering button on and I turned it off and the sound of my project just kind of went dull. So I wanted to recreate the sound of the MX-1 it's mastering chain in Ableton. Kind of first off to learn how how it was how to create one and then also just to get that sound back. So this isn't going to be the be all end all of mastering chains, greatest mastering chain ever created, but it's going to help you to get, at least get started and learn how to create your own mastering chain or at least understand how mastering tools work. So this is the track I've got and it's rough because it is just a sketch out so far. And first I'm going to put an EQ8 down. And what this is going to do is shape the overall curve of the track and balance it out a little bit. So to start, I'm going to boost the low shelf at about 60 hertz. And I'm going to boost it. I'm going to do a pretty aggressive boost. And I'm going to set the Q to about 1. Then around 120 hertz to bring out the kick the punch of the kick a bit of the high end of the bass line gonna boost that just a bit and then put a cue on it to curve it out and make it a bit more pronounced and then around the mid range I'm gonna boost that And then on the high shelf, I'm going to boost just to bring out those highs. Then right after it, I'm going to put another EQ8. And what this is going to do is I'm going to cut the low end. And I'm going to cut anything below 40 hertz. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve. And what that's going to do is it's going to, while cutting everything below 40 hertz, it's actually going to give a little boost to everything right around 40 hertz. And that's going to give the bass a bit more meat. And also at the same time, by cutting the 40 hertz, everything below 40 hertz is going to allow the speakers to recreate the bass sounds right past 40 hertz a little better. Because what will happen is you'll have a lot of sonic data or energy in those low ends. And if it's too, if it, there's, you're trying to create too much way past 40 hertz where ears can barely hear it and you can't feel it it's not gonna really work out well and it's gonna end up making the low end just sound really muddy but this clears it up makes it sound nice and crisp and then around on the high end I like to put an aggressive high pass filter or low pass filter to get some of those highs out while also boosting some of the highs also because it's gonna boost everything right around the curve and then cut everything else and that's just so that when you've got this on a loud system those highs aren't as harsh sounding um, they can get really harsh if you've got them in a club setting and you've got those highs going really loud then right after that I like to put an exciter so what I'm gonna do is use the saturator as an exciter if you use the Sinoid fold, it's kind of like a tape delay or a tape exciter. So give it around five decibels, and then bring down the five, bring down the output about five decibels. And how that's going to work is by boosting it five decibels and then bring it down five decibels. You can actually hear what you're doing to the track. So let me just stop the music for a second. This works so that when you're auditioning your changes, there's not a boost to the sound that you're hearing and the affected sound. So if the affected sound is louder, sometimes that can just sound better, even though it's not actually better. By putting it around the same, you can hear what the effect it actually has on the track. So let's play this again. You can hear how there's that distortion there. So I'm going to bring it down just a bit so you still have the clarity, but you have some of that 
sonic distortion that makes it sound a little more crisp. All right, so now let's group these up. This way we can audition all the changes we've made. So there's the track with nothing on it. And there's the track with this on it. You can hear how everything sounds a bit more crisp, how the lows come out a little bit more. And you can kind of hear that we're getting somewhere like a mastered sound. So now we're gonna put an EQ8 on the end of this. And we're gonna put this one in mid side mode. This allows us to EQ the mids and the data on the side or the sound on the side separately. So for the mids, what we're gonna do is we're gonna boost right around 70 Hertz. And the reason why we're doing this is we're gonna give a little boost to the low end because we're about to actually go over to the side and cut it from the side. And that's gonna help with the things like the Juno. It has some of that low end in the sides with the chorus effect. And we're gonna cut that out to get more punch in the mids. Now, why do we do that? We do that because the, when you have stereo sounds in the low end, they end up losing their punch. You want all of your low end stuff to be in the middle because that's going to have the most hit and the most punch on your listener. And it's going to come through more better on a sound system. All the things like delays and hi-hats and things like that, those can be in the stereo and even leads. You could have them kind of stereo and pads especially you want stereo. But when you have your low end and your bass sounds, you want those all in the middle because they're going to punch a lot more and come through a lot more in your in your mix down. Um, so that's why we, we EQ this out of the low end. And then at the same time, I'm going to turn on the high shelf and give that a little boost right there and let's listen to that so you can hear how some of the high stuff has gotten a little more stereo but then in the low end you can hear how it's the kick is punching through a little better the bass sound is a little more centered and that's really good that's what we want now right after that, we're going to put a limiter. Oh, and I forgot one thing. All these EQs we want to put in oversampling mode. And the reason why we do that is that has the EQ8s work on a higher bit rate or, um, yeah, I believe it's a, the wording would be bit rate. Work on a higher bit rate so that some of that high end data is not lost as it's coming through each plugin. It uses a little more CPU, but for a mastering chain, you want it to, to have that high end or high data. All right, so now we're gonna boost the limiter. And this is gonna work like a maximizer because we're gonna turn it up quite high. And you can see that the limiter is limiting around minus three dB. And so that's gonna make it kind of match with this breakdown into the build. And then what we're gonna put right after is a utility. And we're gonna bring that down about seven dB. This way, when we turn this off, it's around the same volume level. So we can hear the differences that we're making and see if that actually does sound better or if it's just loud. A lot of times our ears can trick us into thinking that just because something's loud, it sounds good, but that's not always the case. So there you go. This is the beginning of a mastering chain. Um, if you have any tips, I'd love to hear ways that you've created mastering chains. Everyone has a different way. This is the way I came up with it. Um, if you have any tips, like I said, post them in the comments. Um, I'll post the chain, this, rack for download and I'll put it in the show notes or 
in the notes of the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Uh, make sure you check out my other videos, and I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks.